Hi and uh, welcome to Peel. In this video I'm gonna show you different cohort analysis that we're running. We are adding a lot of metrics every week or every other week so I'm gonna take the first four that I tend to go over with uh, my colleague Yasmin during these intro calls and, uh, and dive a little bit more into them. Obviously this is gonna be a short video so if you have questions feel free to ask at any point. Uh, you find us on the site by clicking that chat bubble at the bottom, uh, just click on that, ask a question and we're happy to help. Um, so really don't hesitate ever. A lot of these metrics are coming from your requests too. So if one of them is almost what you want, but not quite, just don't ever hesitate to, to ask. So chords metrics are gonna be on the left. Uh, everything is expanded here, but if it's collapsed, you just um, click the arrow and expand it. There are a lot of different metrics. This demo account doesn't have all of them, including refunds and discounts, but all of the other ones are here. Uh, your account should have, in theory, all of them. We're gonna start with a customer retention by cohort. This metric applies mostly to um, subscription businesses, but not always. The first thing, uh, since it's the first one we're covering, is let's get familiar as with uh, with the screen. So with the header, uh, we have some explanation bubble that opens when you click here that will show you. And we're likely to develop this a little bit more. So by the time you watch this video, hopefully it's a little bit different. The filters are also changing all the time. You start with a date filter that help you understand uh, how much data you're putting into this chart. So here by default, it's 12 month and it's the latest 12 month. And in the segment, we're gonna cover that in a little bit, but that's one of the more powerful part of Peel. Then underneath you have the grids and below that you have another grid, which is the table. In their default state, they're almost the same, but we wanted to keep that on every single metric where you can see the raw data at the bottom in the table and on top a more visual um, uh, highlighted version. So the way cohorts work right now, we only offer monthly cohorts, although weekly and quarterly cohorts are coming. Um, monthly cohorts are meant to represent the month in which customers have placed their first order. So if I placed my first order in August 2020, I'm part of the 10,209 customers in August 2020. Here, customers is the number, is the size of the cohort. All of them have placed an order, all of them have probably paid for it. Uh, some of them have been refunded, so uh, they don't get excluded. Also, customers never turn out of a cohort, so you stay with the cohort forever. If I place a first order in August, uh, 2019 or 2018 and then I come back only two years later I'm still part of that same cohort which is why you may want to look if your business has a lot of data you may want to look at metrics from uh, several years okay the reason we don't default to it is simply because it's just too much to load and uh, and to navigate but it's here so uh, don't hesitate to play with that now back to 12 months um, that's for the cohort that's for the size on this column, on this, sorry, on this graph, the columns represent the calendar month. So the first month is gonna be the month of the cohort, and then the following month is gonna be the following calendar month. So say I place a first order in uh, June, on the 20th of June, and then I place a second one two weeks later, it's technically my first month, but really it's the second calendar month. So my first order is gonna be in June, and my second order is two weeks later in July, so second month, okay? Uh, that makes it easier to compare cohorts with each other, but obviously some customers are in the beginning of the cohort and some are at the end of the cohort. So that's why having monthly cohort is helpful, more helpful than quarterly cohorts, and a little bit less helpful than weekly cohorts, but it's easier to see 12 months at once than 50 uh, weekly cohorts at once. So that's for the layout overall. The colors are our attempt to just highlight the higher numbers and the lower numbers. So. It doesn't have too much of an implication and the uh, color will be attributed to different values depending on the metrics. It's more a way to really see um, here in diagonal, you have the light orange and then a lighter uh, yellow here and an even lighter yellow that shows you that these values are roughly the same or in the same uh, category. So 100% in the first month uh, retention. So what is retention? Retention here is a little bit of an inverse of churn and it's um, if you look at uh, a specific column, we're going to look at the third month, it's going to be how many customers were with you at that month or later. So 
if you look at this, we say 59.8% of customers are retained, essentially. That means, as far as we know, some cu these customers purchased three months later or later. Uh, so on the third month or later, okay? And then if we look at July, after three months, it's 48.5% of customers place an order then or later. The or later is always a little bit confusing, but it's really just the not before. So that means that, uh, the, you know, 51% of your customers from July 2020 never came back uh, after, I wouldn't say the first order because uh, we're at 58.3% in the second month, but they never came back the third month and uh, and after. That's essentially what it means. So that number keeps going down over, over time. Uh, the best businesses will plateau at some point, and I'm going to show you how. But uh, what we're looking at is essentially um, how many customers were still with the company. And if I purchase every three months, um, I may not appear, you know, um, in January quite yet because I've only purchased my first time in January 2021 and then not again in the second or third month yet. But I'll come back on the fourth month and all these percentage will go up immediately. So we recompute all of these data daily and we're going to increase it. You can look at uh, the absolute numbers. So here we're counting customers, right? And the percentage 100% means all the customers. It's not a number of orders, right? It's the number of customers. Um, so you had, you know, the first column is always actually the same as the number of customers. And then how many customers came back? And the percentage would be this value divided by the size of the cohort. So that's simply how it works. So 5,860 customers in the July 2020 cohort placed an order on their fourth month or later. And we see that 5,001 placed on the fifth month or later, which means that 859 uh, customers did not, right? They placed an order in the fourth month and then never came back essentially. So that's how you look at it. Um, when you switch to percentages, uh, you see uh, that clearly that's what we had. And then if you switch from chord grade to line chart, you're going to see that plateau I'm talking about. So the plateau is less clear here because we're sort of dropping in this business towards zero all the time. But you can see there is an inflection point always after the first month, which makes sense. A lot of customers just place a one order in this business and never came back. And then you see uh, the best businesses are going to plateau here. And then ideally you hover over 40%, 20%, 30%. And it means these customers are coming back all the time and never leaving you. Uh, in other cases like here and uh, in businesses with low LTV um, or LTV very close to the first average order value, then it tends to go to zero. And that means you're reacquiring customers all the time because you, um, you don't keep the customers that you have. So every business is different. Obviously, having a high retention rate is better. If you have a subscription business, that's one way to have a great retention rate. Um, I don't know. Oh, boy, it did that. And um, that's it. So I'm going to move on to the repurchase rate because some of you are already thinking uh, that it does not apply to you. And so we're here, repurchase rate per cohort. Repurchase rate is interesting because if you don't have a subscription um, business, you'll want to be able to look at how uh, how many customers placed more than one order, essentially. And we'll see that there are other metrics that allow you to dissect that exact metric uh, in multiple ways. But here it's very simple. It's uh, We said earlier, not all customers place that second order. So here, let's see how long it did it take. Uh, we look at June 2020 or September 2020, these 12,000 or 10,000 customers. And we see it the first month, only 1.98% and respectively 3.47% had placed that second purchase. You know, it's two plus purchase here. Um, so some metrics you'll see have uh, another option and this is one of them. Uh, I'll explore that in a second. And then we see how long did it take for half of your cohort to make that second purchase. And I would say it took up until the fifth month really for the earlier ones but we see that lately it's been a little bit lower it took until a six month so here it's cumulative but in the other direction it means that by this fifth month 50 percent of all the customers in a cohort have uh, placed a second purchase 
It could mean it was in the fifth month or earlier, essentially. If a customer comes back every month, they only count once in this scenario. So um, if you're wondering how many customers place three plus order, you just change that here. We don't recompute this for all the orders simply because it's not super helpful and there are other metrics for it, but that's the idea. So we see it takes longer to get to 50%. Actually, this business doesn't get to 50% of the cohorts placing three plus purchase, but that's fine because some of these customers are gonna spend a lot more and maybe all the way to 10 plus purchases. Not really, <laughs> just a few at the end. Uh, um, but 10 plus purchases is worth you know, 10 customers. So um, in theory, so, so that's what you're learning with this. What's interesting here is to understand when that second purchase happened. Um, we have other metrics again that play with this idea, but if you're um, looking at when a customer can be considered churned or uh, lost forever, you can see that uh, uh, there is a moment where this metric is gonna plateau. And let's see here. And the plateau here means um, it's just growing much lower. So in the second month, we had a ton of customers coming back and then fewer and fewer. And then uh, as we go up, obviously, we're getting towards the fact that all of your customers seemingly will repurchase. But if we look at 24 or yeah, 24 month, we're gonna see that it's not entirely accurate. Um, where you're gonna hover, but you're gonna struggle to go past 70%. And at some point, just you're not increasing that percentage, and it means there are customers who are just never gonna come back. Uh, it's gonna be more visible on your charts, simply because your uh, this demo account is made of random purchases, and customers tend to not come back after some point. Uh, whereas here, the, the random purchases are happening all the time. So that plateau is really interesting to watch. Going back to the core grid. So that's for the repurchase rate. There's a, a very uh, similar metric that you can look at. It's the re uh, customer, uh, core customer per order counts. Well, there we go. So this metric here tells you not per month, but per order, how many customers came back. And uh, and you're, again, counting customers. So um, the first column is gonna be how many customers placed one order, and then how many customers placed two orders, and then three orders, and then four orders, etc. All the customers who placed nine orders also placed eight, seven, six, and five of them, right? So that number is ever decreasing. Um, if you wanna know exactly people who place exactly three orders, and not more, uh, you'll have to subtract some of these numbers. But that's where you are. So how many customers place more? Uh, uh, so yeah, let me switch that to uh, percentage value. And now it's, uh, if you look at the repurchase rate by cohort, which we were looking at earlier, we can see that um, uh, the percentage we were talking about is essentially for two orders. So we're looking at how long did it take for the entire cohort to get to 100%. And that's essentially the same metric. So that's the last value of each row of the repurchase rate for two plus order and then three plus order and then four plus order. So this one is telling you essentially how many customers are making more than one order. And if you're working with a business that, um, that sells subscription at irregular uh, uh, frequency, for example, every two weeks, every three weeks, every seven weeks, every three months. It's interesting to not look too much through time, but more at number of orders to see how many orders are placed every time. So that's how you look at it. Um, and then we're gonna look at LTV. So LTV, uh, and I'm gonna explore the segment since we haven't touched on this yet. LTV is essentially the sum of profit divided by um, number of customers. So uh, you have at the bottom of this list, I'm seeing the video, COGS right here. I can't show it on the demo, but we can load them from Shopify. We can load the product cost from Shopify if you're a Shopify Plus customer, or you can input them there. Um, the profit is going to be just um, unit price times quantity. Uh, minus the refunds, minus the discounts, and minus the costs. Uh, we now support shipping costs also that you'll see under shipping costs. Oh, we don't have any costs on this. 
And so shipping cost and shipping revenue can be included here. So uh, let us know if you're interested. And uh, we have more integration to build with shipping costs, which is why it's a slow rollout. So uh, beside that, LTV essentially means how much profit do you make per customer over time? The value you're interested in is always the last one of the line. The first one is after one month, you here had made roughly $30 of profit. Now, if you look after 12 months, you're lending on $78. So it's an ever increasing number because as we saw in um, earlier, you keep having customers coming back. And that's the best part of this uh, business is when you acquire customers at one point and then you keep them over time. So this is LTV in a nutshell. Um, it works the same way. Now, what's interesting is to look at them through segments. So we haven't looked at uh, segments too much. If I segment by product here, I'm looking at one product specifically, phone grand, and now I'm seeing the LTV over time. Uh, it's interesting if I know what I'm looking for. If I'm curious for, there's this product desktop, which tends to sell at a higher price point, and now I wanna see if the LTV is higher, and indeed it is higher, and I can get that number. But if I'm curious to see what is the biggest driver of LTV through uh, all of my products, or through attribution channels, or through uh, any of the dimensions that we can segment here, then you click on uh, time and you switch to single cohorts. We're gonna let you pick one cohort. Every cohort is different. With time, you're selling different product, etc. So that data is, uh, is tricky to, to look at it in aggregate. That's why we offer the different month. You can take the top ones or you can just pick really any cohort. And um, here we're looking at April 2020, so that's 12 months. Um, and we're looking at each product. So we've highlighted the top ones. Sometime in your data, we're gonna figure out the top ones or not, or mostly the latest ones. And you might not see all of them. And that's where that table at the bottom is helpful because it's always gonna have all of the um, products. And we see in the first month, the LTV is very different. On average, it is indeed at $30.70, but the desktop and laptop are at a, a much higher point. So obviously it's a weird product that where a desktop or a laptop would cost $50, but bear with me. And then over time, we see if that difference prevails and it does. So the laptop, uh, even though it starts roughly at the same amount as desktop, ends up uh, over time, uh, bringing double the amount at $100. Well, desktop is a little bit below at $94, and uh, and then the phone is only at $62. So if that was the dimension you can influence by pushing a product more, or um, or maybe it's a question of service, maybe customers who purchase this phone product are disappointed by the service or by the quality of the product, and that's when you know you need to either work on it or look into service calls or uh, simply um, stop selling this specific variant or market it differently, price it differently, etc. There are a lot of implications here. So the conclusions are many, but it's up to your business to really understand what impact products or attribution channels or payment gateways uh, or uh, variants, SKUs, you know, you name it. They're all under segments. And this demo is very limited, but you will find a ton of different segments. So I invite you to explore that uh, on your accounts. That's for LTV. Um, the last one is, so we have core LTV, average lifetime revenue and lifetime revenue. Core LTV is gonna be the sum of LTV for the entire cohort. That's interesting if you're curious about how much money total this cohort brought you in profit. Same thing with lifetime revenue, except here it's gonna be including sales and uh, including um, taxes and not excluding cost from it. So in this example, we don't actually have too many costs. So lifetime revenue and uh, LTV are roughly the same. And average lifetime revenue, it's gonna be same as uh, customer LTV. It is going to be the lifetime revenue divided by the size of the cohort. So these numbers are roughly the same. So the more cost you have and the more you input and peel, the more accurate the LTV is. And the goal of the LTV is really to um, to tell you how much money you're making over time so that you know what you can spend in advertising to acquire these customers. Uh, that's it, I hope that was helpful. Feel free to ask any questions and uh, happy to uh, go over this in person or in person over uh, a video call at any time. So please reach out on Intercom or by email and, uh, and we'd be happy to chat with you. Thanks a lot.